The entity framework is a object modeling layer that we can use to map out a collection of database objects into classes and objects inside of our environment. In .NET Framework, we've got a number of different releases of this, but basically it allows us to go out and create a logical representation of some physical schema. Sometimes, for instance, with like addresses or something like that, you might have a physical schema that maps things as in a certain way, like with address line 1, address line 2, but you might have a logical representation that changes that out to be city, street, and then zip code, etc., that doesn't necessarily map exactly the physical schema. What the Entity Framework does is it allows us to then create this intermediary layer that then can iterate through uh, different types of data stores into actual classes in our environment. The Entity Framework can map out to uh, not just SQL Server, but to uh, many, many different providers that support the Entity Framework. Um, we can create it from the database or we can create it from scratch, but there's a very deep integration between the code that we create and the database. There's been a number of different releases of the Entity Framework, or EF. Um, the first version came out with .NET 3.5 and Service Pack 1, which supported just the database-first workflow, where you would reverse engineer an existing database and get a, a map that laid out what things looked like. After 4.0 came out, they included the code first. And then after that, in 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, they uh, started releasing them using the NuGet package manager so that they could release this out of band from what Visual Studio is doing. Um, so 4.1 included the code first uh, workflow. 5 includes a number of different uh, support for enums, for table valued functions, spatial data types, and much, much more. And then the EF6 includes asynchronous support, connection resiliency, code base configuration, and a lot of other features that people are asking for. There are really two different types of workflows. When we talk about workflow, we're talking about how people use the Entity Framework to go out and build um, their model. And you either have uh, either an existing database where you've got existing code and objects that you're going to be working with, or you're doing something new and you have a new database. Um, these are two categories of this, and then you have two types of development uh, methodologies. One is designer-centric. This is the graphical, I've got uh, images and models and pictures, and I want to draw lines and make things uh, kind of work. So it's a designer-centric where I use the designers to go out and create uh, the, the resulting model. And the other is to do a code-centric where we're building off of classes. Um, for all four of these types of, um, of workflow, um, there's a solution for Entity Framework. The designer working against a new database the workflow, we call that model first, where we go out and create the model in a designer, and then we can generate the database from that EDMX. Um, classes get auto-generated based on what we put into the model designer. The database first is where we have an existing database, so we reverse engineer the database into a model, and then from there we can make changes to it and alter it and update, and we can actually update our model from the database as the database changes. In a code-centric, we have code first, which is where we're creating classes in just simple compiler-type classes, plain old compiler objects, map it out in code, and then uh, the database gets auto-created at runtime. And then there's the code first, where we're going against an existing database, and then we just use the mapping to reverse engineer back in. Um, the first one I want to look at is going to be the model first scenario. So let's take a look at how that works. So let's go back into Visual Studio here, and we're going to create a model. Now this is our link demo. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And I'm going to add to this a new, a new object. So I'm going to go up to New Item, and I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to search for ADO, and I'm going to add an ADO.NET Entity Data Model. Um, and actually, let's just create a new project. So I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to add a new project and I'm going to target the .NET 451 framework. We're just going to do an ASP.NET and we call this my EF demo. And go ahead and say create. And then we can create a WinForms or an MVC, whatever type of application you want. Um, you can include Web API, Web Forms, you can talk about identity. But in this case, I just want to create an MVC application or a Web Form application. So let's call this dot .forms. And 
and go ahead and create it. And now that we have our .NET application, we can go ahead and close this because I'm not really that interested in it. And I'm going to add a new item, and that's going to be an ADO.NET MD framework model. So we go up here into our search templates, just type in ADO, and it'll go out and find the MD data model, and we'll give this a name. My model first. .edmx, create and add. I'm going to create from an empty model. And the reason I'm going to do this is I want to go out and I want to create something that I'm going to work with in this application. So I'll go out and just create this. And what it does is it gives me a designer where I can add different things. So I create entities by going out to the toolbox and adding them. I can right click, say add new entity. And we can then type in the entity name. We call it, say, my class or my course. And you'll notice that the entry set is actually uh, pluralized. So it goes to courses. Or if I type in um, horse, it gets horses. Or if you type in goose, you get geese. Or if you type in mouse, you get mice. Or type in moose, you get mooses. So we can go out and create objects, and it's going to figure out what type of object to put in there. So if I was to put in my, say, course, and I've got courses, I can then say, here's my primary key. It's going to have a property name of ID. Go ahead and say OK. And it creates the uh, class for us. Now I can go here, and I can just press Return. And I can add more properties, like, say, title of the course. And I might have also um, a description or a, of the course. Similarly to this, I can also go out and I can say add a new entity, and we can create something for a instructor. And the instructor is going to then have a name, and let's call this instructor ID here. And over here we'll call this class ID. So we have class ID and instructor ID, and we might have a, a relationship where we say this course is actually related. So I can say create an association between these two objects where I say my course has one instructor. So I might have many courses associated with a single instructor. And we might have zero or one because we might have courses that don't have instructors yet. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually create an association for us. If I right click on this and say OK, you'll notice now that we have navigation properties for uh, describing how this works. Um, if I were to go out and say, right click, say generate a database from the model, then this is going to go out. It's going to take our context here, and we'll go out and we'll create a new connection. And I'm going to connect up to a database. So let's connect up here to this. Say we want to use our link demo database, which is already connected connected up to a database. I can use that. Click on Next. And this is now going to go through, and it's going to create some uh, data definition for us to go out and actually create what that looks like. And it creates an actual SQL file that then we can get hand off to our DBAs. So inside here, you'll see it's going to go out and it's going to create a, a table using courses. It's got a primary key, um, which is actually set up to be an identity for my uh, class ID, it's got the title, description, and then it's got a uh, instructor ID, which is going to be tied into a, an int on that. And then we've got the table for instructors, which then comes out and then has some uh, foreign key constraints saying this is now going to resolve out to my course instructors. Um, if I wanted to and say, okay, each course can have many instructors, and an instructor can have many courses, I could change this. What's interesting is that if I take this, and let's add another association here, if I had said that a course can have many instructors and an instructor can teach many courses, then what it's going to do is, in the model, it just has the two tables. But if I take a look at how this would actually generate the DDL by going down here and say generate database from the model, Then I'm going to find that it's going to come out here, and it's going to create the courses table, the instructors table, and it's going to create a resolution table for course instructors so it knows what that resolution is going to look like and how it's going to 
uh, get populated. So if I click on finish and then go ahead and run it, I could then actually go out and create the model that has uh, all of the uh, pieces on that environment. So then you can come down here, you can say here I'm using the demo DB and then creating the table for the uh, different objects including the primary and foreign keys. Now there's a lot of things we can do in here for developing courses. We might have courses that are going to be online versus courses that are offline like webcasts. So I might have an entity that's going to be an online course and the online course is going to have as its base type a course and then I can say here's that online course and inside of this I might have a property that's going to be added to say okay well so if I add a new property for instance like online link and maybe a date that that course is I might have uh, additional properties that are now associated to um, that course but it's using the model and kind of the design to say okay well here's how all of that stuff is coming together um, if you look at the table mapping down on the bottom, you can say, okay, well, here's the different tables. If I look at the course and I look at my mapping details, I can see here's my map where I'm actually mapping the columns out to uh, different spots. And I can do the same thing for the instructors and see how that's going. For the online course, it's going to go into the actual the same table, which would be my courses, but then I might have an additional column, which is then going to add a mapping for that. So if I was to go through and say generate the database from the model at this point now, it's going to go through and I'll see that my um, online course is going to have a uh, course, but it'll also have a class ID and then the additional fields for um, that online URL. So that is one way of working with Entity Framework is doing the model first. I could also do a database first. So for instance, if I have, if I want to, I can go back into my Solution Explorer and let's create a new one. We'll say add a new uh, item and we'll call this Model 2. And in this case, I want to generate from the database. So I can go out and I can say yes, go out to my uh, data source and I'm going to give this a name. We'll call this my Demo Data Context click on next and then I can go out and I can select from the database the objects that I'm interested in so I might have tables views stored procedures that I want to work with um, in this case I've got uh, some stored procedures as well that I could map out so I might have uh, lots of good stuff that I could pull into my model click on next And what it's going to bring back is going to be a model that's going to have um, all of the different objects that are in the database. And so, for instance, if I go down here and take a look at presenter, I've got presenter name, title, image, and I might add additional things in the database. If the database changes, maybe I want to go out and add something that's not in my model. Um, I could go out and I could say, okay, well, here, add that. So, for instance, webcast. Let's go ahead and just remove this from the model. Now I might not have course and instructor. Let's go ahead and delete these. And um, if the database were to change, I can go out and I can update the model from the database. This then allows me to go out and say, okay, well, here's some tables that aren't there, so I could then add them back if I wanted to. I can refresh or update or change um, other items. So the uh, the Model first allows me to go out and create the model using the designer and it generates the DDL or the data definition language for me that then updates the database and creates the objects. The database first approach where I've got the database and I create the model from that allows me to pull in that model which then I could go up through and iterate around. These are two of the designer focused type of things.